Welcome everyone to Mamados Medical Media, a free online YouTube channel, weekly posting new medical videos. Join our Facebook and Telegram groups for more interaction and latest news. You could also support the channel on Patreon, where we upload multiple choice questions and other premium content. Thanks in advance. Disorders related to the sensory system. Hi everyone and welcome and this is going to be our last video on the chapter of the sensory system in which we're going to look at some disorders that affects the function of the nervous system. We're going to start by lesions that affects the tracts or affects the sensory system as whole. We're going to start with the lesions affecting the cerebral cortex. If the lesion was on the primary sensory area then the patients will lose the ability to localize the site of stimulation because this is the function of the primary sensory area these patients also lose the ability of the two-point discrimination and also they have asterial noses which is the inability to describe objects by handling while eyes are closed and when we have a lesion in the sensory association area which is the area that interpretates the meaning of the sensation perceived by the primary sensory area there will be a disturbance in the body image and in spatial orientation and these patients have sensory inattention which means they lack the sensation or the feeling for some parts of their bodies then if we have lesions affecting the thalamic nuclei and in these lesions Patients report spontaneous pain of most unpleasant quality with exaggerated response to pain stimuli due to the facilitation that happens by the neurons of the thalamus. And in these patients, there will be loss in all of the sensations from the other half of the body because all the fibers decussate and cross to the other side before synapsing with the thalamic nuclei. Lesions related to the spinal cord, we're going to talk about in more details in just a few seconds. Then we have lesions affecting the dorsal root ganglia and in these lesions, sensations are lost in the relative dermatome that is supplied by the nerves in the dorsal root ganglia. And if there is diseases like neuritis, neuropathy in diabetic patients, for example, affecting the peripheral nerves, then all common forms of sensations are lost in the distal parts of the limb and they also report feeling of numbness. And now let's move on to disorders related to the spinal cord, starting with brown secret syndrome. And brown secret syndrome is a hemisection of the spinal cord which could be complete or partial. It could be caused from trauma, from gunshot, from road traffic accident, whatever was the cause, but there is a hemisection in the spinal cord. And when we look at the level of the injury, we will find that there is an epsilateral loss of all sensations. The dorsal column tract fibers cannot ascend and the spinothalamic tract fibers cannot cross to the other side. So we say the sensations are lost epsilaterally. Now when we look below the level of injury, we will find that at the same site of injury there will be loss in the sensations related to the dorsal column tract but when we look at the spinothalamic tract we find that when they pass then they go safe to the other side but the fibers of the spinothalamic tract from the other side are lost because when they cross and ascend they are affected by the segment the second disorder we have is syringomyalia and syringomyalia is an abnormal pathological cavity that are found within the substance of the spinal cord and they are prone to enlarge and this disease is characterized by these fluid filled cavities they call syrinx and now if we want to look at tracts affected by this disorder we will see that the dorsal column tract at the level of these cavities are not affected because they pass through the dorsal column while the fibers of the spinothalamic tract because they cross passing the center they are affected in this disease so we say in syringomyalia there is a dissociated sensory loss the fibers of the dorsal column tract are not affected but the fibers of the spinothalamic tract are affected then we have the last disorder we have in this video and it's called tabus dorsalis 
and Tabes dorsalis is neurosyphilis and it happens in the tertiary stage of syphilis in people infected by trypanema pallidum and in tertiary stage of syphilis the trypanema pallidum concentrate around large myelinate fibers leading to more damage to the medial lemoniscal dorsal column pathway and they more concentrate on the dorsal root just central to the dorsal root ganglia and in these patients there will be loss in all sensations related to the dorsal column tract they have sensory ataxia because they lack the ability of proprioception and they have positive Romberg sign and it means that these patients are unable to stand steadily while their eyes are closed it's a test that is done we say that there is a positive Romberg sign. These patients also have loss in pain and temperature fibers and loss of all reflexes in the affected segments. So that's it uh, for this video. Thanks everyone for watching and we see you again in the next chapter about the motor system.